What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another edition of the podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about canceling and or rescheduling of photo sessions. How do you deal with that? What's up with it? Does it happen often? All this and more <laughs> on today's podcast. But before I get into that, I kind of wanted to talk about or just ask, have any of you guys seen A Star is Born? I recently saw this uh, two days ago. Now, I put it in queue, long story short, to watch with my wife on a date night. You know, one of these nights when the kids decide to go to bed early um, and leave us with a little bit of quality time to spend with each other. I, th I figured it would be a really good movie for us to just watch together. And so that was the plan. This also runs on the coattails of seeing the performance of Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga uh, at the Oscars and hearing that song, uh, Shallows, for the first time. And it was just a really great performance, really great and catchy song. And so that was one of the main reasons that I wanted to to see this movie. Um, but the gym <laughs> sort of came first. And the gym that I go to, we have a movie room. So they're pretty good about getting like the latest and the greatest as soon as it comes out. And I'd gone into the gym on Friday, last Friday. And sure enough, I hear that song playing. And it's like, wow, okay. Looks like I'm not going to wait to see it with my wife after all. I'm just going to go ahead and watch it now. <laughs> and it was just a really great, I just, I personally felt it was a really great film. It's, it's not too often that you really catch a good heartwarming, just, I guess, romance movie. Uh, I don't watch them too often. There are only a few that I would consider my favorites over the years. And this ranks among the top five in my opinion. It was just really well done, a really great story. Just looking into a lot of the reviews from other people on YouTube and finding out that, you know, this is actually the fourth time that this story has been told. Uh, it's not an original story. Uh, the title, A Star is Born, has had three previous films made. Um, however, they were different. It, it, like the same sort of premise, but some of the details change in order to allow the film to apply to the time that it's released. So I think the first two were based in Hollywood. So it was an actor who found an actress. And then the third one that was the most recent was based on musicians. So it was a musician finding another musician. And this one follows that same sort of format, a musician finding a new voice and just the relationship that they built. No spoilers in this podcast, but, you know, the ups and downs, great soundtrack, really great film, and just really well done for Bradley Cooper's first time, I believe, directing a film. Uh, he did a really great job, and it seems like a lot of people in their reviews of the film kind of speak on, you know, how this guy who played the frat guy in Wedding Crashers can go on to become this. And I took it in a sense of like, it's really doesn't do him justice as a person and as a creator to sort of compartmentalize him on maybe what whatever his acting roles were to get him into the industry. But to be able to diversify himself and break sort of that typecast mold because you hear it all too often from other actors on late night or on interviews that, you know, you're, you're cast into a role and then that's who they want you to be. That's who they're going to cast you in, in the next film and the film after that. So it doesn't leave room for much diversity in, in your craft. And that touches on uh, a topic that I talked about in a previous podcast, just sort of, you know, doing what you want to do or finding your passion in this life and doing what you would whatever it is you would want to do for free. Um, because at the end of the day, once you start making money and once you start making your career um, or making your hobby or your passion, your career, you 
might find yourself losing some of that creative freedom. Uh, I say this because it, with photography, though I love, and, and I'm repeating my previous statements in my previous podcast, but I'll say it again. Um, you can really sort of compartmentalize yourself into a certain niche. And what I mean by that is if you just enjoy, you love taking photographs and you want to test yourself or push yourself in different directions, maybe you want to try landscape or you want to try doing portraiture or just creative photos, but you primarily do weddings, that's what pays the bills, that's what keeps a roof over your head. That is what you do. You, you're a photographer and that's your full-time job and you may find yourself becoming unhappy with that and not having the room to be creative. So that's one of the main reasons why photography is primarily a hobby for me, though it is a paying hobby at times. Um, when it doesn't pay, it doesn't really matter because I still have my nine to five. I have my job that pays me, keeps the roof over my head, keeps you know food and my family uh, cared for. Well, not food cared for, but... <laughs> What I mean by that is it, it, prov it provides care for all of us. And just the photography aspect of who I am creatively, it's something that pays for itself with regards to buying new equipment, buying new lenses. I wouldn't want my nine to five job to have to pay for that stuff. So I look at it as if I book a wedding, well, that money can go towards date nights. It can go towards gifts for my children and it can definitely go towards upgrading my equipment. So for me, it's a win-win. It is not something that I have to stress landing that next job. I don't have to stress over some of those things. So sort of off tangent there. A Star is Born. I thought it was a really great film. I definitely want to rent it. I told my wife that I had seen it. And she wasn't really too like anything about it, but she's, she's pretty interested now. And I think that, well, not tonight, but maybe one of these weekends in the future, again, when the kids find it in their hearts to <laughs> go to bed a little bit earlier than normal, uh, they'll give mom and I the time to enjoy it a little Netflix or, well, not really Netflix, I should say, just uh, a nice movie rental. So transitioning into what this podcast was about to begin with, clients canceling, needing to reschedule, does it happen? Yes. Does it happen often? Not really. And what do you do about it? Well, the best thing you can do I feel is not take it personally to begin with. Whenever somebody wants to cancel with you or they want to reschedule, you have to remember that you are presenting yourself. You yourself as the photographer are the product and you want people to consume what it is you are selling. And it's yourself, it's your work, it's, it's who you are. And it just doesn't encompass one sole thing with regards to the photos that you produce, but the experience that you provide to them from the beginning to the end and even after the fact. So there is a lot of customer service involved, in my opinion, when it comes to any sort of exchange in just money for services that that can help set you apart. And if a client needs to cancel or even if a client... Like worst case scenario, you have a client that wants to pull like a no call, no show. That's fine. Do you rant about them? No. I do not condone or suggest or even anything of the sort would authorize. <laughs> I can't think of any other analogies, but I would say that is a huge no. Do not rant about people who pull no call, no shows. Just do not work with them again. You can usually tell if this is the type of person that's going to do this often. And hopefully you're not put in a position where you're out, whether it's money, time, or a drive. It would be a shame to make a trip and have somebody just cancel on you last minute 
or not even get a call, send a text, and it's like, where are you? There, I think you have to chalk it up as that is the price of finding out that person's character. And you have to be willing to accept that price. Because it, in the grand scheme of things, is a very small fee to learn that lesson. Now, when it comes to bigger projects, like this, this is for collaborative work. This is for things like, um, say, engagement sessions, family sessions, things that you're not really charging top dollar for. When we're talking with regards to weddings, that is where you need to cover yourself. You need to cover your buns and get that deposit. This is to ensure that, one, it saves the date for the client so that they have that peace of mind that you're not going to book somebody else or double book or whatever, sort of that dog ear in your planner. And if they decide to cancel or they want to go with another photographer or the parents want to pay for another photographer, there's a million and one reasons why they might bail or change their minds last minute. Hopefully they give you enough time. But it's a, it's a potential loss in clients because wedding season is very specific with regards to when it happens. There's a certain time of the year that everybody decides to book their weddings. And if you save a slot for one couple and they decide not to go with you, you might not have the time to find another client to want to fill that, that weekend, that, that day. So at least you won't be out too much. And now this is, podcast isn't about how much you should charge for your deposit or, or whatever. That's completely up to you as a photographer. You have to test the waters yourself, but people do cancel. And that's worst case scenario. Somebody no call, no shows or whatever um, cancels on like the day of or last minute. I've not had those happen to me. However, weather can be another factor. And that's something that you have to be able to to deal with. Now, for myself, I'm always up for a challenge, creatively speaking. Um, if people want to, say, book a engagement session, and it's been raining like crazy here in this area for just the past few weeks. It's been the most rain that I can remember for a very long time. And... I mean, it's good, but at the same time, it it can be it can be an issue if you're trying to if you don't if you're not a studio photographer if you shoot or you capture photographs outdoors it can that can tend to be an issue. So, with that being said, weather can be a factor and rain, most importantly. So, I spoke about myself being a little bit creative and wanting to work with certain certain things. So I leave it up to clients. If we're going to have a really windy day, if it's going to be rainy, if it's going to be overcast, overcast, not really an issue for me. That's actually preferred just because the lighting, but if rain, um, extreme wind, uh, maybe fog, I don't know if that would be something, but I don't see those as issues. I see it as something that we can use. It's an element, a new aspect that we can add to the photos because for me, it's like everybody has engagement photos, maybe on a sunny day, sunset in a nice area. But I almost wonder what kind of images can you capture? Say if it's raining, if you're outdoors in the elements, if there's extreme wind catching say the article of clothing that your couple is wearing, you can really work with it with regards to um, the fiance's hair uh, blowing in the wind, male or female. I mean, no judgment. People have really long hair and it can be either or. So when it comes to those things, I just, I wonder what kind of images can be, can be, can be had in that scenario. Now, I'm not the one who's paying for this session. So it makes sense to me why, why clients would opt for a sunny day because 
again, that is a gamble. They don't know what they're going to get. And I sure, well, I can assure you, I don't really know what I would capture in that scene as well. How much of it would be usable before they're just drenched? How much of it can we handle before the hair is just so blown out from the winds that it now no longer looks majestic. It just looks like you're standing out there in the wind. So to me, that makes perfect sense why the weather may be uh, a major deterrent for clients and why they might want to cancel in that regard. So there's, there's plenty of reasons why people want to cancel and why you have to be open to the idea of rescheduling too. This is something that I've had to work on with my wife or within in conjunction with my wife, um, just making sure we're on the same page with regards to time slots that I've been caught on maybe one more, maybe more than one occasion booking jobs before confirming with my wife to see if maybe there are plans for us as a family. So making sure that the time is then available. So whenever I deal with clients who want to reschedule, usually I'll tell them just fire out a couple days that you think will work for you. So then I can check my books, which really means I'm going to check with my wife because I know what my books look like, but at the end of the day, I don't know if we're going to have a family trip or a family's going to be coming into town. Even there, there's variables. So usually when it comes to rescheduling, it's just, Hey, shoot out a couple dates that you think might work for you in the future. But with the rainy season, it's almost like you've got to watch it like day to day or week to week. Cause even then the forecast, it might tell you one thing, but you might have clear skies. And even if you have like a clear day, if the day before is a really wet one, I mean, you have to take that into consideration too when telling your couple that, the location you're going to might still be wet. Even though it's not raining, if you're photographing outdoors in the woods or on the beach or wherever, the the surrounding area that you're going to be at, the landscape, might be wet for them. So clothing might get muddied up or sullied, you know, if they want to wear nice shoes. So these are all things that you have to let them know just so it's like, okay, that day looks like it's going to be a dry day, but what about the day before? You kind of need two days of dry weather before you can get out there and things are really dry again. And that's with regards to rain. So keep that in mind when it comes to rescheduling things as well. Um, And that's kind of it. On that topic, I mean, <laughs> we sort of got off on a tangent in the beginning. I wanted to talk about that movie just because I thought it was a really great film. I'm definitely going to watch it again. And, you know, clients, they do cancel. So just being open to to being able to work with them and reschedule. I highly encourage everybody out there to exercise good customer service practices. I've had years in customer service jobs, whether I was working at a grocery store, working in food service, working at a drug store, all of these things. You have people of all walks of life who come in looking for, for goods, whether it's groceries, whether it's food, whether it's prescriptions or alcohol. And so you have to be adept to handling everybody and giving them a positive customer experience. I think that's one of the things that I've been able to bring with me into my photography. Now that I'm a blue collar worker, I seldom work with the public. It's just uh, the same group of guys. So customer service sort of be damned and it's off to the wayside for everybody, which is again, why I, enjoy having this as my hobby. I enjoy having photography to be able to continue to hone my skills and communicating with strangers 
meeting people who come from many different backgrounds with many different perspectives, many different views, and just being able to provide them with, with a great product, a great piece of work that I put myself into, which is, well, photos. And just that little bit of customer service, treating them with kindness and being at their service. So if they've got a reschedule, what can I do for you guys? How can I help with that? Give me a couple days that work best for you and I'll verify so that we can make sure that we're able to get together and capture the photos that you want. These are all the things that I really try to convey in a positive light and not take it in a, with a negative tone like, ah, they canceled. Whatever, I don't want to work with them. Or give them the cold shoulder or no call, no show on them. Or speak ill of them online to other people. Because in social media, you have to remember all eyes are out there. And if you have sort of a negative experience with one of your clients, they may never tell you. But they will, I guarantee you, they will tell at least 10 people about the negative experience that they've had with you. And when it comes to providing a really great service with somebody or a couple or uh, a bride and a groom, they may tell you, they may not as well, but chances are they might tell one person. So it behooves everybody in this industry or in any service industry to really try to put that positive foot forward. It was something that I learned very early on, probably one of those old school 70s or 80s training montage videos that they played, you know, during orientation at one of my jobs, but it just, it stuck with me and I try to apply it all the time. Even in, even in the blue collar industry, I mean, I've had to speak with other vendors or other contractors and I just try to be very cordial with them too. And I found that it takes, it has taken me a lot farther in my career to provide a positive experience than I think because I don't know this for a fact, then I think it would have had I been cold or negative or very just unapproachable with people. So that's sort of my two cents on it. Again, I want to thank you guys if you made it this far on the podcast for your continued support. Thank you for taking the time to listen, to hear what it is that I have to say about photography, movies, whatever the, whatever it may be that I'm that I'm talking about on these podcasts. And yeah, if you guys have been over to the website or you found me through the website, I have updated it recently. You guys can submit or you guys can now submit questions or topic suggestions um, that you might have for me. I do host two different podcasts. So this one is photography related. My other podcast is more whatever. It can be about movies. It can be about games. It can be about my, my fitness journey, anything and everything. I typically have guests or more guests on that, on that podcast than anything else. But if it's photography related, you guys feel free to send me questions, uh, send me topic suggestions, anything you guys want to know. You can always slide in the DMs on my Instagram. It is Photography, I believe. Or you can just search for Ramon Campamore and you ought to find one of the two Instagram profiles that I have. The one that's that ends with photography, that one's definitely mine. The other one that doesn't end with photography, that one's probably my personal one. And yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Again, thank you. And as always, till next time, see ya.